Hello everybody, welcome back to Hunt Creative. Today we're going to make some table-worthy mushroom folk Vicodin miniatures from Dollar Store Materials. I've got some fish tank gravel, some cut-up matchsticks, some hot glue puddles on wax paper, and some little wooden circles. For our first step, we're going to make hot glue puddles on our wax paper to form the mushroom cap portion of our Vicodins. Here I'm just drizzling it out onto some wax paper. You can see that I've got a few ready-made ones on the bottom. I'm just going to move these hardening ones off to the side and I'm going to peel these ones off of my wax paper. I find that these hot glue puddles make excellent mushroom caps for scatter terrain and, in this case, mushroom men. Some of those were a little rough, so I decided to wait for the ones I just created to harden, and here I am peeling them off of my wax paper. I'm going to make five different sh shroom folk at this point out of these pieces. Just taking a moment to get them all off the wax paper, and I'm going to use my fingernails and some scissors to snip off any remnants of the wax paper that have stuck to the bottom just so I get a nice clean presentation when they're all finished. I should really grow my fingernails a little bit because they're very short and it's tough to grab that wax paper with them. And here I'm just using some snips to trim off a rough spot on top of one of the caps that I've made. Apologize for working off camera here. I am concentrating intently on what I'm doing. And here I've laid out all the parts for like my Mykonid men. And I'm going to glue a three quarter inch long torso body part to the wooden disc. The wooden disc is going to form the base. And the three quarter inch piece of matchstick is going to form the torso and the body of the shroom folk. I'm going to add some quarter inch pieces of matchstick to form the arms or the limbs of the Mykonids. Just a little dab of glue and I've cut these at a slight angle so that they stick out not at right angles. And I want to make sure that when I'm aligning them on the body portion they are also not forming a straight line or a 180 degree angle. A little off angle is more natural looking. Once that's dried, I'm going to drizzle some hot glue over the top of the body torso portion. And then I'm going to just make sure that I hold the limbs in place while that drizzle of hot glue dries. This gives the body a little more naturalistic, chaotic effect. The liquid dynamics of the hardening hot glue and the shape of the matchstick leads to just a tiny bit of chaos here, which will help me in the future when I paint and wash these portions of the models. Just making sure everything's lined the way I want it to as that hot glue dries. And we got a torso and a couple of limbs. And I'm going to glue on a haft for a staff or a spear-like weapon that this Mykonid is wielding. And attach it to the circular base and one of the limbs. I like to alternate equal opportunity for left limb and right limb in this case, so that I get a little bit of variety of models on the table. And I'm going to just add that mushroom cap hot glue puddle, a little dab of hot glue on top of the torso body that harden a little bit. And move the hot glue around a little bit with a spare piece of matchstick. And then I've got some screw trim buttons that are in the shape of wooden mushrooms that I'm going to glue one of to the top of each of these staves and paint up to match specially designed fungal blooms that are used by this species as weapons. 
I don't see these myconids as having easy access to smelting and metallurgy. And so I envision them as kind of fungi culturalists who breed different types of fungus and molds for different purposes. So they might have foring, sporing fungi whose spores create hallucinogenic effects or whose spores burn on contact like acid or whose spores are flammable and ignite when exposed to flame. That sort of thing. It's my homebrew campaign, so I feel free to imagine them as I see fit. There we got one created. And now I've assembled the rest of the torsos and weapons and limbs on the other fungal models. And I'm going to spend a few moments here just gluing on the hot glue puddle mushroom caps at the top. Just a little dab of glue. And I'll pop those caps right on top. Try to get them roughly centered. A little bit of inexactitude is okay, and a little bit of off angling is okay. It makes it look a little more natural and breaks up the uniformity of the models. That's why I alternate weapon hands as well. Add another cap glued on with a dab of hot glue. And we'll set that aside to harden. A few more to go. I'll be ready to move on to the next step. And the last one is slightly larger and I'm going to paint it out a little differently than the others to act as sort of a a leader or a different cast or a different biological role. I'm not really sure how I'm developing the civilization of these shroom folk, but there are options available. Here I'm using a little clear Elmer's glue and a brush and some aquarium gravel, fine aquarium gravel, to texture the bases. You can see there's a little bit of dirty paint water on that brush, but I'm not too worried about that. won't reduce the stickiness of the glue I'm using to attach the gravel to the bases. I just slather it on and I'll dip the bases into that bucket of gravel that I have by my side, one at a time, and I'm just brushing, brushing any excess gravel off the edges or the bottoms of the bases. I want them to sit nice and flat on the table. to go. Doesn't take very long. I do have the video sped up a little bit, but uh, you can see it's not a terribly complex task. It's just a matter of getting the glue on the base and the gravel on the glue. Last one. We'll be ready for the next step. So what we're going to do here is we're going to coat the models in black, but I don't want to hit the tops of the mushroom cap and I don't want to hit the bottom of the mushroom cap because when I paint those out I want them to be very brightly colored and a black undercoating kind of defeats that intent. So I'm hitting the torsos and the bases and the base rims and the hafts of the weapons, but I'm trying as hard as I can to keep the mushroom caps from being coated in black paint. It doesn't take very long, there's only a few models here. I've got a nice big brush that's kind of worn down so those bristles can get into different places very nicely. I'm looking for about 95 to 99 percent coverage. I'm not too fussy about it because I'm going to dry brush the gravel on the bases to create some textural interest and any unpainted bits that show through will kind of be hit with that or blend into the dry brush effect. Let's 
once I hit the bases and the torsos with this large brush, I'm going to come back with a slightly finer craft brush from the dollar store and finish painting out the hafts of those spears. Doesn't take very long, but it sure helps the painting process later. And I'm not using Mod, Mod Podge and black paint here because I'm going to coat each model in Mod Podge to finish it off after I've completed the paint job. And here's that finer brush and I'm just hitting all the shafts of those staves or what have you that these uh, models are wielding. Again, I'm trying not to get the bottom of the mushroom cap. more to go and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step and that's my favorite where we get to paint these guys up all colorful and uh, brightly hued kind of like nature's warning signal here's the color scheme I've chosen I've gone with blues pinks and aquas a little bit of gray and a little bit of tan for the dry brushing of the bases I'm just gonna squirt some into my palette and we'll get to work that palette really dirty. I should clean it out one of these days. So I'm going to start with kind of an off white ivory color, and I'm going to paint all of the torsos and limbs in this very bright off white color. It's going to look a little strange. I'm also going to paint the underside of the mushroom caps with this color. But when I am finished the painting job, I will have hit these with kind of a brownish green wash. And that's going to really pop the irregularities of the hot glue drizzle that we use to make these and really make those parts pop out and look good. few minutes here I'm looking I'm not being terribly terribly fussy I want to get pretty good coverage on the limbs and the torsos and if I get and the bottom of the mushroom caps but if I get a little bit of overpaint on the base texture or the haft of the spear I'm not worried because I'm going to paint the hafts of the spears brown and dry brush them a little bit and I got to dry brush the gravel texture on the base so that's going to help disguise or cover up any mistakes I make here If you enjoy this content and appreciate what you get out of these videos, I would encourage you to click the subscribe button and hit like. It'd be nice to grow the channel's audience and that's one of the easiest ways you guys can help me out with that. And it will help me be able to make more and more videos as time goes on. I've got a, quite a few planned at this point. Right now I'm working on some cavern cave dwellers and cavern cave scatter terrain. And once I finish up that series, then I think I'm going to move into a new direction. I'll have to see what that looks like when we get there. Next week on our new video Thursday, I'm going to create another video showing some other iconic D&D cavern dwelling monster minis made from dollar store goods. So please feel free to join me for that.
I'm just hitting the bottom of those mushroom caps and that's going to pick up that wash that I'll add in just a little while and make them look super duper. Here I'm just touching the tops of the mushroom cap portion of four of these models and one piece of scatter with kind of a turquoise aquamarine color, very light blue. I want the center of the mushroom cap to be the lightest. camera here because I'm thinking so hard that I forgot that you guys were watching and I apologize. So now I'm going to use a slightly darker blue color and I'm just going to come in and do a bit of a rough blend around the rims of these mushroom caps. Again I'm not being terribly terribly fussy about the coverage or the smoothness of the transition here because I'm going to dry brush over it and that's gonna help blend these all together. And after I Mod Podge these, I'm also going to coat the mushroom caps with uh, Elmer's Clear Glue, which provides a nice glossy finish. As though the mushroom caps were glistening with uh, accumulated underground moisture. A little bit gross, but hey, they're shroom folks. Maybe they are a little bit gross. And I'm just doing a really, really quick rim treatment with a medium blue color to kind of hammer that blueness home. And this is just a piece of mushroom scatter that I'm painting to match these guys so that they kind of blend in on the tabletop. Now this larger mushroom folk, I'm going to use a pink base coat, pinks, mauves, and purples for the mushroom cap on this one. And this gives me an opportunity to create a story around different roles or different casts or different biological functions for different species of mushroom folk. I don't have to do that and I don't have to make that kind of story up. But by painting a variety of colors and making a variety of sizes of these models, that gives me the opportunity to create stories around those features if I so desire. And here I've finished up with some blue striping on the caps and some purple striping on the pink larger mushroom folk. I've painted the spear hafts brown and dry brushed them. I've painted the little mushrooms at the top of the staves in a bright orange and red scheme. And now I'm dry brushing everything, or pardon me, I'm mod podging everything to protect it against wear and tear during storage and while in play on the table. I like to do this with everything that I create just so that it is durable and stands up to the wear and tear of day-to-day -day play and tabletop use. a little off screen here again. I'm sorry, old dog. I'm still learning how to stay in focus. It's kind of a habit here where I like to pull it in close to my chest to work and that doesn't really work for my camera set up over the table here. I'll learn. I'm working on it and I'll just slap it on Mod Podge so it's not terribly exciting to see anyway. Can the old dog learn a new trick? Got two more models to figure it out here. 
Oh, look. The dog can learn a little bit. And then I'm back to close up against my chest because I'm still training myself to work over the mat. I'll get better. I promise. Or at least I'll try. I'll promise that. And they're all coated with Mod Podge. And here's a shot of some of the entire set that I've made. Sitting on some dungeon terrain with some other mushroom scatter that I've made. These are the ones I made in this video today. They're looking really good. If a bit out of focus. I have to work on my camera skills. And these ones I made previously. And they're all different colors. And then the mushrooms in the background are scatter terrain that I made from my video last week. And here we could see some D&D &D models included for scale. Feel free to join us next week on Thursday when I release another video. And I'm going to tackle another iconic underground denizen of the D&D &D landscape. If you'd like to know what that is and see how I build it, please come back and join us then. Thanks for joining me on Hunt Creative, and I appreciate all of you viewers.